English, our language core. Um, again, uh, I am presenting the view of a female traveler instead of an academic and male, and uh, my view of a language that we are all sharing one, one common core. So um, if you, I am going too fast, you know, please type the name in YouTube. You can rewatch it and I hope uh, you can understand it better because of the program limitation, the time limit. I have to go really fast to even get a little bit of idea across. Okay, so uh, I don't waste time. So I will start from the beginning of this week's slides. And this week I'm going to talk about, you know, continue with with the little grass that uh, with the sarsam that goes on to become your sieve and you know the same the net that you catch fish with okay so again uh, this is the basket starfish you can see that I stress that it we all share one common core none of us are separate uh, family trees and uh, because that will usher in human hierarchy this is a very Eurocentric view of looking at things so I think it needs to be changed and um, once again um, uh, Again, I present to you this, you know, normally you look at the root like this, you know, um, this is a normal view, but I can uh, just tell you that it's kind of a Eurocentric view. Uh, it's always vertical and linear, and because we tend to look things up and down, and it becomes hierarchical, and it actually affects a lot of our psychology to understand the world. You know, how about looking at the world at a different angle like this? Um, how about uh, sharing a different perspective? And uh, horizontally, once again, when I say horizontal, I don't mean that look at the line horizontally because all this timeline is always horizontal and or, or vertical they are always aligned what I mean is to actively looking outward or inward 360 degrees and then maybe our world will look a little bit different because the picture I show you here is also you know the cross-section of a Bali root so the root that you saw a while ago is this exactly the same you know like a this Bali root and but you will see that all the relationship between the center and all the others you know they are they have a lot of relationship even though sometimes they might look a little bit different so that's how you know we draw our different conclusion of life so um, again, you know, the change of perspective I insist on. Uh, normally you look at an apple like this and how about cutting it sideways? So they are the same. They are both apples and then you don't go to different uh, conclusion. Uh, Please, you know, uh, I will take you along with my Asian pair of eyes and also a traveler pair of eyes and ears too, you know, so you will understand language from my perspective, okay? And again, uh, I'm, I want you to look at nature's pattern. Um, in nature, nothing forms in a linear manner. Everything is a lump, you know, a, a, a thing coming out from the center. It always spiraling through, including our genes and everything. This is nature's pattern. Pattern. And human being part of nature, everything follows the same pattern. If you're thinking that you are scientific, it is not possible that language always, uh, you know, grow in a linear way or other uh, timeline is always linear. So uh, we have to have some remnant of this nature's pattern pattern. So you will see that um, if the more you go in, uh, I like to use this Roman um, cauliflower as a, an example. This is a very interesting, you know, uh, vegetable itself. The more you look in uh, closer, you will see that every single little one is an, uh, uh, is an enlargement. I mean, the, the minimize of the large one. So no matter how you look it, you know, the small one is an uh, 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 the, the same as the big one. The big one is look exactly as the small one. So this is nature's repetitive pattern, you know, that they always follow. And let me uh, take you through language to see how the, this pattern consistent uh, in our languages. First of all, you know, we have this pictograph in early Sumerian, you know, with the sound gi or G. And then later on, you know, this little grass, you know, uh, take on the meaning of read or also it take on the meaning of essence the sound still is very consistent and then of course you can understand it in English you know so English is 
not that new at all you know you, you can understand it as the gist you know of something and because it is the essence or you can understand it as the key and if you look at Chinese you know many thousands of miles away and we have this very ancient oracle bone writing and then this is also me, uh, pronounced as Gai Gai is also means a piece of grass and then um, now it's still written like this and then um, uh, uh, more than a thousand years later still um, I talk about a thousand years later it is still you know more than two thousand um, years ago okay and then uh, we have another writing still uh, holds the sound like gay this is gay this is gay okay gay exactly means the key of something the pivot of something of the gist of something or it can also extend it to mean uh, in Latin machina the kin sound okay so uh, it is the machine itself you know the, the as long as you have a cock you know that's something that runs if you pay attention to the sound cock c-o-g the things that runs a machine it is still follow the same system okay so when they started you know so the industrial revolution um we all said that you know europe started it so but i can tell you many many thousand years ago they already started this you know revolution with the their uh, very very simple machinery as long as they started using this circular way to do things the sound is already existed since then you know this gay sound and then of course you know in the writing itself the Chinese also adopted this sign right there whenever we see it again uh, I, I kept telling you that we mean some unseen energy in the West you know it adopted also this sign you know of course this is the eight uh, symbol later on and of course you know all this uh, uh, energy that become the Bao sound R A E O U because you know without this uh, vital of energy Energy, you cannot act right so this is the very very basic sparks that sparks an action that's why the English word action has to lead with an A so you will see that all oh, this thing is very subtly you know involved you know and, and and hidden inside all the languages from east to west okay so of course you know later on wherever you see the A or E it's always kind of you know telling you an action like illuminate you know elevate all the you know led by an um, a vow itself it's always uh, indicating some kind of an action of course you know uh, this cause and key of our existence you can also look at the word like the etiology or, or etymology so all this you know all the time you will always just look back to the Greek you know they will always tell you that everything comes from Greek but I can tell you that this um, very interesting philosophy philosophical uh, search of the causation of anything or go back to the very beginning of life itself so this uh, not only uh, confined to the Greek uh, etymology you can also see it from Sanskrit this art art in Sanskrit means to walk or any movement of course when you start walking that means you have a soul Atman in Sanskrit means a soul and then you will say that oh it only combined uh, to the Indo-European language but then I tell you no because in German uh, the word attend also means to breathe, the breathe to breathe you know this vital breath when uh, an animal start to breathe you know they suck in that air this is how the ancient understood that they take in the life that's when animal begin to act and become animal okay they have their alma they have their anima okay so um the german also have this guy's word the guys in german also means spirit or the ghost itself just like the english word just so you will see that the the hard g and the soft g interchange between uh, german and english so you will see that they are very very close to each other all these uh, language systems and the chinese also have words like this 
this. If you look at Chinese oracle bones, you will see tons of this, you know, horn animal right there. And then you will see, you will understand that it indicates some kind of unseen energy. And Chinese also have something like that. It always indicating, you know, some complementing or contradicting energy. So you will see that gradually it becomes the sign of yin and yang. If you Google the sign of yin and yang, you'll understand what I mean. So you will see that these two contrasting or complementing energy existed in the in the ancient's mind a long time ago it, to the atomic level. So even the word atom, why is it led by the, the, the letter A? It was already built in long, long time ago in our human understanding. And, um, and as I said, you know, the atom, even the cation and the anion, they also you know, is already built in. We cannot invent words, but based on what already understood about life. So this came from a long way, many thousands of years ago. Because um, if I give you an example, you will see that this bullhead Ka sounds as Ka. For the ancient Egyptian, it also means the soul. This is the energy that moved. Or it um, just a little bit right uh, next to Egypt, you will have the proto sinaitic You know, this is uh, the, also the bullhead representing the Aleph, which later become the Greek Alpha. You will see that the A uh, letter and the Ka sound already existed or in all these languages as some contrasting thing but none of the language actually you know present them side by side all the time but all of them are hidden in all the languages if you don't find it in one language you can always find it in their neighbors so um, because we all came out from the same core we are not different family trees okay now you will see that nature's pattern actually reveals very much in our human language as well. And um, I will continue on with the sa sound I, uh, I started a few weeks ago, okay? So uh, you will see that I keep repeating to show you there is a core sound in all the languages. And I ignore all the grammars, but the linguists pay so much attention in grammar these days. It actually diverts us to look at our differences instead of telling us how similar we are okay but the core sounds that are there the meaning keep changing why because our life keep changing once again you know if I put you to Mesopotamia you will see that you know there, there are a lot of growth of different reeds and grasses and this is exactly where this writing came from the earliest writing you know the to represent the piece of grass they have the gi or the gai sound this is a Chinese and they have both mean you know the grass or the reed or the cane and um, look at that it actually means cane okay so the cane in English still uh, can uh, hold on this key or key sound okay they are just very very uh, simple sound shifting and then if you look at Greek you know they have uh, Kalamos. Kalamos is actually means king. So the ka sound still, you know, very strong. So you will see that all the different language languages either will maintain the ge sound or the ke sound. Okay, so. And, and I will change the picture so you can understand because when I lived in very uh, um, remote countries and less developed countries, I keep seeing these images and my ears keep hearing those sounds. So when I live in those contexts, they are actually very easy to understand. So Kalamos is the cane. And then you will see that in Arabic, you know, it becomes, you know, the Kalam. What is Kalam? Sometimes, you know, they, they, uh, the scholars also transcribe it with the Q. So it actually confuses us more, but in real life they will pronounce as Gollum and, and what is Gollum? But a pen. But you will say that what is a king's relationship with a pen? Of course, because since ancient time we always use a king as a pen. So this core sound exists, you know, carry on. The, the, the word also carry on, but the meaning keep changing because we human beings invented different uses for the same material. Okay, so 
and and why is it you will say that then why is it pen because later on you know uh, Europe started also use you know the feather quill as the pen so this is the Latin pronunciation of pen pen actually means the quill of a bird and this is exactly what they use as a pen then that's how the wood uh, survived you know and carry on until this very day and now because none of us see the original form of anything so so we are so uh, far away from reality that's why words become just words you know word doesn't carry too much of a reality to us these days that's why I need all those pictures to show you what's the origin okay so um, they are uh, Sumerian carry on you know so you see the very similar sound they uh, they have a plural form like Gilim Gilim actually you know also start spinning for them it means rope of course you know when they started using this uh, dry grass they started to derive you know the method of trailing and to make into different things you know Gilim means a rope you know and also sometimes they write it this way you know another way of showing you this the uh, the to, uh, trailing something circulating something but you can also understand it as a square or, or a circular uh, piece of something because you know by by uh, uh, by trailing all those ropes around you can actually make a rope rug you know to until this very day some of the rugs are still made the same way okay so the gilim stays on you know because in turkey in turkish you know they have the word kilim kilim means the rug itself and of course you know otherwise you know you would say a carpet but of course in real life kilim is a weaved you know rug and the carpet is the 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 a rug with a much longer hair a different way of making it but after all they are something that underneath us you know that started with uh, uh, some dry grasses that's why it still links to the old sound okay so let's look at the finished product in ancient Sumerian you know from that of course you know from ghee that's why they have to distinguish it uh, using a K, a kit uh, or the sa actually means a mat. Okay, you will see that clearly. And then the Chinese, you know, uh, join a basket because you can also look at that if it's made of dry grass, you can also use it, you know, curve it a little bit, become a basket. And then you will see this cross, you know, showing the weaving itself. And you can um, you can see that the sang we have gay k or key itself, and then the still it means the basket are weaving and then when we elevate itself you know after that is the same mat we just you know put the mat on a different uh, background there it actually become you know uh, the uh, something like a cot you know even the English word cot still maintain the curse sound and then in Sanskrit kata is really means a mat and then the relationship between Sanskrit and Greek is here uh, for them kata means a mat in Greek Kata actually means something below, okay? So um, the Chinese also elevate themselves, you know, we have a different writing, maintaining still all this sound itself. By that time, it already means a stool. So you will see that the core sound stays on, the meaning keep changing. And after all, it all started from a piece of grass, okay? But I will also show you that, look at the Chinese writing. When the um, Arabic, you know, word, you know, uh, follow the ge sound, galam means pen, the Chinese have a picture like this for us we mean write you know to write but we actually follow this in another direction the su and it actually means um, follow this uh as I said, you know, this one has two pronunciation, either the kit or the sa, but the Chinese actually follow this route to, to develop our way of saying writing. But we are not alone there because other than su, we say se in Cantonese. And then I can also show you the picture of hieroglyph because hieroglyph also share the same uh, line of sound because they say it's se, se actually means to write so they also draw out their utensils of writing when the Chinese write their brush using a cane and then you will see that we are all using the same thing and as time developed you know we develop
develop our own uh, word under our own culture. So we are not different, but only because we separate into a different area, we develop our own sound based on the same core sound, okay? So again, the grass actually developed into all this, the sif and the sing. The Chinese uh, has the sound of sai or sao, and then another way of writing is here that can also uh, follow, um, chase all the way back to Sumerian, the sa later become this. And of course, you know, by weaving a mat, you can also use it to screen things. It become a net. And then uh, finally you have this sa, it means a reed bundle. And when you put it in the river, you can screen the fish out. So it is very easy to understand. And then the Sumerian also have various, definitely because, you know, in ancient time, it's the same material, but you have to distinguish different kind of basket, different kind of screen, different kind of net, okay? So they have this sao, sim, su, all kind of mean, you know, uh, a sieve. You know, you will see that, you know, they, they try to tell themselves at that time. Of course, now after so many years, you know, uh, a few things left uh, behind, but then uh, you have to go back to their own context to understand exactly what those basket or sieve looks like, okay? But you can see that the sound actually is still in the same system. And then the Hebrew have sao means basket, or the sa also means a vessel, a hold, a measure, you know, because they use a basket to measure things. The Arabic has sao to mean a basket, a shabaka means the net, and you will see that uh, at the beginning they all use very similar thing, and then um, they uh, look at this, this is a Sumerian cuneiform, look at how closely related they are to Chinese too, and it means, you know, to sip of the willow something, they have different ways of writing it, you will see that, and um, they all mean willow or to sip, even the English word sip is also following the same line, and look at this Chinese Chinese writing there. It uh, doesn't it uh, look very similar to that other than using this as to to show the basket and this way for the Chinese is to split something. Of course you use a sip to separate something. Sometimes it's quicker to separate big grains from smaller grain or big pearl from small pearl. That's what I saw when I um, visit Bahrain and they use a sip to sift through all these you know different sizes of pearl which uh, are their main, you know, product. So you will see that uh, this is the a very, very interesting thing that you will see that Sumerian also share very, very similar uh, pictograph with the Chinese. And then for the Chinese, we have this thing. Uh, finally, we wrote it like this, and then it become uh, it maintains the sound of sai, si, or shi in Mandarin. They all means you know to sift, to sift, or a sifter. So um, then you will say, why is it that this uh, Hebrew you know change? They don't use this uh, the 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 s sound because by that time you know the Hebrew uh, the the Jews were very very close to the to the Greek you will see that the s of in Hebrew uh, is an echo of the Greek s you will see that each of us is actually borrowing from our neighbors the people that we are very close to. Sometimes, you know, we take it, we understand them as enemy, but after all, you know, they are our neighbors. So you will see that uh, we also need, you know, different visual clues to distinguish them. So because, you know, this uh, writing itself, they use it mainly for the Jews. Whenever you see it, it either means grass or it means some hairy stuff. And you will see it in the next slide, okay? But I will continue on this. This is a very interesting, I, I need want to get through to you at least uh, this week, okay? And when I travel around, I see a lot of people sifting, you know, their product. Of course, the sift and the sift become a verb, and also it actually linked very much to your English word shake, you know? Shake, shock, or shock, you know? It's all, you know, become from the same, I mean, came from the same core. Why? Because the Chinese have this, you know, for us, it actually become 
some you know other than the sai sao si sang either than the shift and shift and also means some vigorous motion of course when you are in context when you see how people shift thing you understand what i'm talking about and in sumerian either than they have used sao or su to mean shift they also have another symbol another sound very similar sound to mean the quick you know the sir and the sir you know it's just a similar thing this is the visual pronunciation okay so you will see that this is a way for them to shake out different things to separate things and the hebrew also again use this sound to mean a sif and look at that they also use a z instead to means anything of motion the, the, the tumult and the agitation is the same thing and then the Greek salos you see how closely Greek and Hebrew is salos means rolling tossing this is exactly what they are doing with doing with the sift and then the sail in Greek actually means to shake or to agitate something of course you will know this word when they say say s'mores you know it's a very vigorous motion of shaking it actually become your seismic activity become how you describe the earthquake now and then of course arabic also use you know instead of using normal s they use it use a z to distinguish them visually it means the earthquake sal sal exactly like this when one means a basket the other salsa actually means the earthquake just look at how close they are so 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 it's the same this is chinese this is hebrew this is greek this is sumerian this is arabic according to the language they should be all different language family why are we all sharing the same core sound are we really different families no we are not and then um even the turkish they, they have the salamak and salamak silkalamak and all means shake look at that how close we speak our languages Okay, so I think I will stop right here. I Again, I don't have enough time to finish all my slides. I want to go slower to let you have time to digest all the sounds. And um, what I'm trying to get through is that with one single core from the grass, we actually, a uh, human being invented all these utensils. And then according to their use, according to how we use it, we actually derived all the words and concepts that we have to understand the world around us and if you uh, can uh, find out all this core sound you will see how close we live to with each other since ancient time but then if we pay so much attention you know by the patchwork from the western way of looking at things we are all different family trees and then we keep going our separate way and this is how uh, what I'm trying to get across and I hope you uh, can type in the bus uh, the name basket star uh, fish our language call in YouTube and we watch it and I hope you can understand what I'm trying to get through to you thank you for watching